Well, first of all, this was a meeting between the Deputy Prime Minister of Jamaica, who is also the Attorney General, but also Chairman of CONSULE, which is the CARICOM Institute to discuss law enforcement issues and national security matters. Um, this is, was a bilateral, but of course the Deputy Prime Minister is here to participate in the Transnational Organized Crime Conference, uh, hosted by Suriname. This meeting with uh, Mr. Chong was important in the context of how we're going to translate the outcome of the proceedings here, what we have discussed in terms of the uh, cooperation that is required, the specific actions which are needed, the exchange of information, how we can translate that into the CARICOM agenda. And he has agreed to take the recommendations which will be coming from this conference. It's not a CARICOM conference, but he will take it to the CARICOM meeting. And that's important simply because when we speak about transnational organized crime, it has an impact on every single country. Is not only the countries which are present here, but the whole Caribbean. So that is important to us. That's more on the regional cooperation. Um, there are specific issues which we address in the regional context, and that's on cybersecurity. In fact, we can safely say that no country in the region is fully equipped or has the capacity to deal with cyber attacks on our critical infrastructure. So we need to work together to build that capacity to make sure that countries are not affected by hackers or illegal activities through the internet. On the bilateral side, we have agreed on a couple of issues. One is that the technical ministries, uh, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Justice and Police, and the Directorate for National Security will dispatch within eight weeks a technical team to Jamaica to assess what they have to offer in terms of training, capacity building, but also in terms of their experiences. They have built certain capacities, uh, centers of excellence in terms of forensic investigation, testing. We don't have that capacity here. We want to work with them. So within eight weeks, that team will go make an assessment, and then we'll see how we can benefit from that offer that they have made to us. That's one thing. But we need to continue collaborating with Jamaica on uh, signing off on some agreements in terms of security, security cooperation. The good thing is that, and this is the benefit of the whole conference, this is not a conference organized by the European Union or by the United States or Canada. This is done by ourselves, the countries affected. And that is something which we should not forget is Suriname is part of this region, but it is a small country, relatively speaking. We need to work together, and this is done among ourselves. That's one thing which has been recognized. The second thing is that we are going to use and utilize capabilities which are provided by our own peers in the region. So we don't need to depend all the time on the European Union or on the United States or on uh, Canada or other countries in, in Europe, UK, and so on. Um, if we can benefit from our sister countries in the region, that creates a stronger linkage, but also is much more adapted to the circumstances in our own region. There are challenges, which we have discussed as well, in terms of persons being trained and then they leave because other countries pay more, uh, are more attractive. That is a problem which we all have. So really, um, manpower, um, and we'll need to address that in a more collective manner. So that's basically what we discussed um, in terms of collaboration bilaterally, as well as in terms of the regional context with CARICOM. Well, the idea is to have this conference repeated every two years. And this is something which I discussed with uh, Minister Chung, Attorney General Chung as well, is that we hope that by the end of the day, we can agree that this conference will take place every two years, not necessarily in Suriname all the time, but rotating in other countries. And every year, we could do a virtual meeting so that we stay in contact, we stay in touch. And so one year virtual, and the next year face-to-face -face so that people can see each other. There are always changes in leadership. Um, but the idea is to have this discussion, this debate continue. It's not going to be a one-off thing because we're not going to come to final conclusions here. This is the first time, in fact, this is the first time 
we are meeting among ourselves. So it's a lot of exchange of information, uh, sharing practices, sharing challenges. And uh, some of the conclusions will come out. One of the conclusions certainly will be to continue with this event. And it will be good for the region because security, without security and safety, economic prosperity becomes a challenge. Um, is there a criteria for the country uh, which will be hosting another conference uh, regarding safety? No, not, not, not directly. Any country who's willing to and capable of hosting this event um, is, of course, uh, free to offer. Uh, we will encourage that as much as possible. It's a cost to a country. That is one thing. You have to have the capability to attract also the right persons. Um, given the fact that we have a good turnout, of high level, political level persons, policy level persons, and also uh, at a technical operational level. I believe that this will be the benchmark in a way. And any country that can follow through with this next year or the year after in a face-to-face -face setting can be any of the countries in the region. We'll see by the end of the day if we can get a commitment from another country to secure the next conference.